Yes, it's time for another behind the scenes video and this time I'm gonna show you some footage from a commercial shoot for an undergarment and outdoor brand, both on location and in the studio. This was the third time I shot the commercial photos for this catalog, social media ads and website for this brand. Uh, and the brand is called Ulmax, uh, which basically means wool max. So it's undergarments uh, made out of wool, which is very warm and cozy, suitable for the cold Swedish autumn and winter. We're gonna take a look at the gear I used for this shoot, like camera bodies, lenses, accessories and so on. And you will see we have shot both video and photography, both in the studio and on location for this client. And for the location shoot uh, for this year's catalog, the client also hired a, uh, a videographer, actually a friend of mine, to produce the video content for ads and social media and stuff, which is really nice for me. Uh, on a location shoot because that means that I can focus entirely on photography. Because sometimes I get assignments where the client wants me to do both video and photography on the same location, which is possible of course, but it's a lot more work. Last year we did sort of a first try to produce some video content as well, but this was more of a if we have time type of thing. So we spent only one hour on the video content, which I shot with my 5D Mark IV. And the video quality from that camera is really not that good, but the client was pretty happy and has used it for social media ads for over a year. But for this shoot, it was pretty nice to be able to focus on stills and have another guy doing all the video work so that I didn't need to worry about that. So let's have a look at the gear I used for this shoot. The main camera I used was the EOS R5 with the 7200 f2.8, the RF version. And this was actually the first time I shot an assignment for a client with this combo since I got the RF7200 just a week before this shoot. And this is probably the best combo I think I have ever used for assignment like this when you shoot handheld. This is beyond words compared to uh, the 5D Mark IV and the EF7200 which I had before. And that is because of several reasons. Number one, the tracking. Once you lock on with eye autofocus, it just stays there. And it doesn't matter if a person looks in different directions or if she walks or if she runs, it just stays locked on. Number two, the eye autofocus. This is amazing because when you shoot with a 45 megapixel camera at f2.8 and view the photos in full size, 100% crop, you can see very clearly if the focus is like dead on the eyeball or if it's like on the eyebrow or on the eyelash. And with this combo it's dead on the eyeball basically all the time. Just amazing. And number three, the RF lenses. If you have an R5 and use the EF lenses like the 7200 f2.8 version 3, combined with uh, an adapter, of course, it works. I mean, it's not bad, but it's when you put the RF lens on the R5 body that the magic happens. It's so sharp, so crisp, so accurate, so fast. It's, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. And there are very few times that I have really sort of experienced a new level within photography when I buy a new camera. But I think that this is the case with the R5 combined with the RF lenses. For some of the still life shots that were also part of this assignment, I used this camera, the Hasselblad uh, X1D Mark II uh, with a 35 to 75 millimeter zoom lens. And I know that I just said that the R5 is on another level, but this camera is as well. Um, as you might know, this is a medium format camera which means it has a much larger sensor than the R5. And this means, of course, that you will get extremely good details and sharpness. You can watch another video here, um, if you like, where I uh, shoot some landscape photography with this camera. But the Hasselblad is not something that you would use for every type of photography. And to make it simple, you can just think of it like this. If you're gonna use, use it for, for something that moves, 
which we did a lot of on this assignment, this is not your weapon of choice. And this is, in my opinion, mainly because of the autofocus system. It's not fast, it does not have eye recognition, it does not have any kind of tracking like the R5 does, none of that fancy stuff. The lenses nor the body has any kind of uh, stabilization whatsoever, so if you want to use uh, long shutter speeds, for example, this is not a good choice. So this camera sort of demands a bit more in terms of good conditions, good light, um, photographer knowledge and so on for maximizing its potential. But when those conditions are met, it's basically the best image quality in the world. And that's also the purpose of using a camera like this, quality over everything. It's not fast, it's actually rather slow, it's not stabilized, but the image quality and the level of details you get is superior. This is a mobile clip of all the clothes that the models wore during this uh, location shoot, and I'm not even sure that this was all of it, so let's just say that there were a lot of changing of clothes. Uh, and this clip was uh, shot by Eric, who works at Ulmax, and also shot some of the behind the scenes photos and clips that you can see in this video. So thanks a lot, Eric. Very appreciated. You can check out Eric's Instagram right here. So here are a few of the final catalog shots after retouching. We also had a day in the studio on a later occasion where we shot both photography and video for their uh, e-commerce website. And on this studio shoot I used the R5 for both video and photography since the R5 delivers pretty awesome video quality. And like I mentioned before this was not the case with my 5D Mark IV and that's why I used Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras for a while. But when I got the R5 and saw the video quality that this camera can produce, I didn't really see a reason to keep the Blackmagic cameras, so uh, I got rid of those. So the setup I made here uh, the day before the shoot was to make it as smooth and time efficient as possible to switch between photography and video. And that's why I used this big shoot through umbrella as main light diffusion, so that I could just switch between a Godox 8600 Pro and an Aperture 300D Mark II for the main light for photography and video. And the other lights for both photography and video were already in place uh, without interfering with one another. So the only thing I had to do when we switched from photography to video was to change the main light, turn off the flashes and turn on the Aperture LED lights instead. And here's a list of all the gear I used in the studio. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching until the end. If you did, you obviously did. Uh, I really hope you got some insight on how an assignment like this works and how it's done. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Highly appreciated. And I know that I don't post videos very often, but uh, I'll keep making videos like this whenever I get the chance. So I hope I'll see you in the next one. Take care, stay safe. Bye.